you know, and, and Delegate Wayne Clark is in studio right now. Wayne, good morning to you, sir. Morning. I, I just, I'm, I'm probably not the person to talk to right now about how government needs more money and shouldn't be giving some back to you because I just wrote my property tax check uh. for my house, <laughs> you know, in the last week. So I'm, I'm probably not in the mood for that conversation right now, but... Uh, but nevertheless, it, you know, and this kind of falls into the instead of withholding taxes, if we made everybody pay taxes at the end of every quarter or every year. Now, you couldn't do that because everybody would spend all their money and there'd be no money left to pay your taxes. Or everybody would be in jail. But, it, but if you did that, it would make everybody a lot more conscientious about the amount of tax dollars that are spent, uh, Wayne Clark. And, and I'm not advocating for that system because it would be a disaster. We, we would not have enough money to pay our taxes at the end of a quarter or or at the end of the year. But if they did it, you'd certainly be a lot more conscientious about it. Absolutely. We probably have to have more collection agents in the state than we do legislators mm -hmm. to get the money from everybody. So I don't think that would work. I agree. But, man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Having just written that check, <laughs> I'm not in the mood to talk about how it's not enough money. After just getting my uh, escrow uh, um, statement from, from, from the golf course and seeing the amount of property taxes I paid for the golf course, yeah. yeah. I thought you delegates were exempt from paying taxes. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, you were in Charleston, South Carolina last week. I know Mike Cornby was there. Paul Espinosa was there. We had Paul on early this week with the intention of talking to him about uh, that, but it, we ended up getting averted into firefighters uh, fees and, and ambulance fees and all sorts of things. Uh, but you were in attendance there. Yes, I was. And if you do you recall everybody from the Eastern Panhandle who was there? Yes, it was myself, Delegate Hornby, Delegate Hike, Delegate Espinosa, and Delegate Hillenbrand. Okay, very good. And what was your role there? So I was there representing economic development. Um, I uh, was able to sit down in the economic development breakfast. Uh, Gary Howe, who was uh, who was our chair of economic development tourism, was actually the vice chair of that committee. Uh, and it's basically a roundtable, and, and everybody goes around and talks about uh, what's going on in their state, what kind of things, uh, what kind of legislative le legislative. Uh, action they've taken in the past, what they're working on in the future, um, and give reports on how their overall state's doing. Um, you know, everybody's excited about our $1.8 billion surplus. Uh, Georgia reported a $33 billion surplus. Mm -hmm. That's a bigger budget. That's a bigger budget. Bigger budget, bigger surplus. <laughs> I don't even know how to spend that kind of money, you know. Yeah. But uh, no, it. it I attended Oklahoma last year um, and then South Carolina this year. We are hosting next year at the Greenbrier, the Southern Legislative Conference, which we're all very excited about. And uh, we had a really good turnout uh, in Charleston this year. I'm going to say maybe 50 to 60 of the uh, legislators between both houses were there in attendance at some point, which was really, really great. Who decided who was going? Was this Roger Hanshaw, for instance? or Hans what? Hanshaw and Blair. So they invite uh, who they want to attend? Yes. Uh, well, can, can you go if you're not invited? Well, sure, sure. You know, are you going to get uh, duty days or anything like that? No. You know, so anybody can attend these. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they, they put strict rules on. They don't want people just coming down for one day. They want them to be down for all three days and do some of the tours and, and things like that. I was lucky. I have born and raised in Baltimore, and I love me some raw oysters. Mm -hmm. And I got an opportunity, uh, me and Mike Hyde got an opportunity to actually tour an oyster farm uh, down in South Carolina, which was really neat. And how they actually uh, grow the oysters, uh, starting from, you know, uh, I'd say a pencil eraser size. And in one year, they're on the market. It's really cool. Is, is that something potentially that could be done in West Virginia or is the climate not right for it? I don't think the climate's right for it. And, um, the, There's no ocean know, here. No right? ocean. <laughs> you know, but these, were in, fresh, these yeah. were in freshwater part. Huh. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's a basin down there that's, that is a mix between their fresh and and their salt water, and it's right in that area that they they use it, and it's really marshy and, you know. But uh, I don't think it's something we could do. Mm -hmm. I don't know which lake would be big enough to handle it.
Billy. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Wayne. Good sure. to see you. Uh, now, your trip to Charleston, uh, Charleston, South Carolina for the conference, uh, that is reimbursable, is it not? Yeah, so we get expenses. Yeah, covered. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what was the big theme? What was the major theme? Uh, I know you had several sub-themes, uh, and you were part of the economic development. But what was was there a major theme that ran through the whole conference? So that's what's great about it. It's There's not a specific, we're going to talk about this, because each individual, uh, I sat in on one of the education uh, uh, forums, and they were talking about the testing. you know, and, and we're in the same boat as every other state nationwide in regards to our third grade testing scores. I said on, in another one, I'm talking about EV vehicles and some of the positives and the negatives on the EV vehicles. Um, and like I said, it did the tour. Um, we hosted the, uh, the, the introduction dinner for next year um, on Monday night, which was really, really good. Um, uh, Chelsea Ruby did an amazing job uh, of of rebranding one of their um, conference rooms to look like the Greenbrier, you know we had little you know uh, fake uh, gambling you know like uh, blackjack tables and all that free money kind of goofing off, but uh, you know um, Roger Hanshaw led us in uh, Country Roads. I can tell you the guy can sing. Really? Yes, he can. Yeah. We'll surprised. have to ask that the next time he's on here. Yeah. Ian Doyle can do a duet. Yeah, okay. that, <laughs> let me, maybe let, not. Let me go back to the surface a second ago, Wayne, and you mentioned Georgia had $33 billion. Uh, aren't all states floating on a wave of surplus dollars now? Yes, they are. And um, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because another one, one of the uh, conferences, the, the roundtables I was not, unable to make because it was the same time as the EV was the – uh, talking about the surplus and the uh, because everybody was flooded with federal dollars over the last few years and how they use those federal dollars and how everybody is pretty much in a surplus right now if if a state right now is not in a surplus they've had they're, they're in some s serious problems um, because they're, they're not controlling their spending correctly um, or, or their tax collection correctly but uh um, everybody's in that same boat because we all were in flux with a lot of, you know, COVID money, you know, uh, ARPA money, all that stuff. Um, so how we use that is, uh, and I wish I would have been able to sit yeah. in on that one. Do you have any idea at all how West Virginia surplus ranks with other states per capita? That's a good question, and I don't have that number. You know, I think they would have brought that up in that other other roundtable that I wasn't able to make. I know Mike Height went to that specific one because um, we were talking about it at lunch. He was going to go to that one. Um, Height or Hornby, one yeah. of them went there, and we I went over to the EV one. Because, and I'd like to come back to EV in just a second, <clears throat> uh, but it's very easy and it's very appropriate to sit back and take credit for the surplus. Uh, but we, we lose. Here we go. Mike Cormby just texted me and said we are third. He did. It was Hornby who went to per that capita. per capita. Okay, okay. okay that, that's good. That's good. So Thank, that, you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. That Mike, shows Mike that, <laughs> that shows that we're, we're managing our budget quite well. So right. That's good, good. EV, are you an EV proponent or, or critic? Or Keep or, in mind he's got electric golf carts there, Bill, mm -hmm. at the golf course. No, I don't. I have gas. You do? Yeah, I can't. I, oh, I didn't We know cannot that. function on electric. <laughs> Oh um, we are too busy of a golf course to have electric vehicles. Huh. Because, I stand corrected. Um, the average, when a, when a, so I'll treat the EV vehicles the same way I will, because I know this, because I live it. An electric golf cart, when they first arrive, for your first six months, you can get two and a half rounds a day. The moment you start, that battery starts to deteriorate. The golf cart batteries have an estimated life cycle of about three years. As you get into the second year, you're really only able to run one cycle without charging. In order to do 185 rounds a day on average, like we do at Locust Hill, I would have to have 120 golf carts gas i can actually fill it on today's gas day we're gassing the golf carts today 
every Wednesday we fill them, and those golf carts will run two and a half times a day. Yeah. And it's seven and a half yeah. miles. Sure. You know, I, I did not realize the smaller batteries, i.e. for the uh, golf carts, degraded that rapidly. That's not the case with the automobiles. No, the automobiles, yeah. about 10 years. No, I've been hearing around 20, 25 years. Well, the, they're they, getting better. Initially, they were saying 10 years, yeah. and as they're watching them, as they're monitoring the degradation, they've raised this up to 20, 25 years. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the, some of that depends on the vehicle, too. Exactly right, and the manufacturer. And I, I, I'm speaking for Tesla. I don't know about the other manufacturers. But Tesla's different, yeah. you know. No, their 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 batteries they've they've you know but when you're looking at some of the 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 you go back to some of the electric vehicles that were uh, out maybe five years ago, you know their their batteries are about to to go and you're talking about a ten thousand dollar you know upwards of I'm I'm not sure that's right uh, I know that's what was projected. Uh, but I think as they have been monitoring these, at least in certain sections, the degradation is not as rapid as what they had in, anticipated. Well, I'll give you, an, I'll give okay. you a small, small example. One of the uh, individuals that spoke was talking about a, an electric vehicle that they bought. Mm-hmm. And um, when they bought it, it had about a 50-mile radius for that day. Mm. Now, and that's where, where we're talking about is, you know, you buy a Tesla and you know, yeah. they're saying 400 miles yeah, yeah, a day, yeah, yeah. you know, well, four miles of range, a range, range. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. so without stopping and charging and, and, but as that battery goes down, the, that distance goes down. Sure it does, but that's my point. The degradation right. is not as much as originally projected. It's actually quite impressive. I have not yeah. seen a report okay. showing that, yeah. but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just the replacement of those, yeah. you know, uh, Gary Howell spoke um, and asked a question to some of the panelists, and basically he said, you're getting rid of the used car market because, you know, I can't go. My, I have 16-year-old twins. I mean, I, you know, they want, they're going to want a car soon, and, you know, if I want to buy an electric vehicle, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars is that where they're starting? I, if they're available, if they're available, yeah. You know, whereas I can go, you know, to a good friend of mine, Chris Boyd, and get a car from him for ten, yeah. And that's going to last the girls, you know, five, six years. You know, it'd be their college vehicle. You can't do that with some of these older electric vehicles because you're looking at an additional ten thousand dollars to put in it for a new battery cycle. It, it, you know. So I'll treat it the same way. If if it's someone who's not making a whole lot of traffic, you know, runs, you know, maybe going, you know, five ten miles to work, maybe an electric vehicle is right for them, you know. But looking at it like the golf course we want to use these things and we want to run these things um and we want to go all around um multiple rounds a day i can't do it and 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 i know that you know my kids they're going to want to go you know soccer practice go to school go to work do you know visit their friends you know you have them in electric vehicle it only has 50 60 70 miles of range and then they'll charge it for the day and then they're stuck. So that was a that was one of those conferences that you attended in Charleston, South Carolina. Maria Lawrence, and go ahead. So, um, what was your big uh, two questions? How many states were represented? So it's it's like thirteen states in the southern in the southern legislature. Okay, yes. okay. And then secondly, what was your biggest takeaway? Um, so I always I, I the sidebars. You know the the little meetings that you have, um, lunches, the, the meetings, the, the dinners and that kind of stuff. And, um, I will always look for others that are in equal, you know, education role or a, uh, economic development role and, and chat with them on, on some of the things that they're doing, you know, some of the things that they're working on to improve, you know, um, on, on theirs. And I'll, a lot of folks that I spoke to from the education side, they were excited about House Bill 3035, where we put in the uh, first, second uh, grade um, AIDS, AIDS mm-hmm. which, you know, they're like, oh, that's that's huge, you know, because that's really going to help our test scores over the next four or five years is having an additional person in there helping these kids to learn, pulling them in little side groups. So a lot of folks will be uh, pulling some of those Mm -hmm. um, ideas and trying to implementing that uh, from us. You know, so that's a good thing. And I think uh, my experience with conferences and 
and so forth is some of the networking yes. and what happens outside the session per se is oftentimes much more valuable than what you <laughs> glean listening to somebody pontificate for an hour and a half or so. <laughs> so. That is true. It, it depends on the pontificator. That's true. <laughs> that's that's absolutely true. How how what's the frequency of these? Uh, every, year. every year. Every year. Every year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Every year in July. Um, last year we like I said we were in Oklahoma City. Uh, Oklahoma City was incredible, and there was only six of us that went. Um, from from the state of West Virginia, there was only two legislators, me and Gary Howe, um, who attended last year at Oklahoma City. Um, I understand. Oh, uh, Patricia Rucker was there. That's right. Senator Rucker. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I understand. Trey Gowdy was a very impressive speaker. Did you see him yes. talk? Yes, I got his book. Uh, listened to his talk. It was really, really good. Um, and this is a bipartisan event, I might add. This correct. is not just Republicans attending this conference. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but tell me about Trey Gowdy. Um, just absolutely amazing um when he was talking about his life and you know his book and um you know how he you know how he grew up and how he uh learned um you know it became who he is so um it really good uh presentation really got me nice and motivated and excited for the event um it was 10 o'clock in the morning on the first day of the event so you know right after breakfast um but no he's a he's a very very impressive man well, he started off as a prosecuting attorney, I believe, mm -hmm. and then he went to Congress, and he was one of the truly influencers in the, uh, at least the, the Republican uh, caucus, uh, and now, uh, and he stepped out of Congress voluntarily. What's he doing now? I know he's on Fox News a great deal. He's Fox News contributor. He's uh, doing present book, you know, yeah. uh, speaking uh, engagements, things like that, um, you know, in his book, you know, so... Um, he didn't talk much about what he's doing now. He's talked a lot about how he got there. I understand he's not a flamethrower. He's he's not he's he's not confrontationalist. He's just he dwells more on facts and perceptions than anything else. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. Correct. Um Hornby was telling me that he did a speech that was quite bipartisan in which he talked about uh, getting a better idea of what Senator Scott goes through as the only black Republican in Washington D C and how many times he's been pulled over for DWB uh, and Trey Gowdy saying that uh, as a white man, it gave him a much better understanding of what somebody like Senator Scott goes through on a regular basis. And, uh, and, and probably every African-American driving a car in this country at some point or another uh, that has experienced. You're, you're absolutely right. And that, that was very good. Um, you know the uh, uh, I I couldn't even imagine. I mean, born and raised in Baltimore City, um, I am very familiar with uh, you know um, a lot of uh, how do I say it correctly? Um, uh, separation. Baltimore City has has always been known as having little mini pods within the city. You know. Um, I'm actually Polish. Uh, my, you know, uh, grandmother Kosmicheski. So we all the Polish folks all kind of lived in the same area, and right next to us was the Irish, you know, and then you know, uh, out of Jewtown, you know, was next to that, you know, and and it was very, uh, you know, a different way of growing up. You know, um, a lot of the older folks went, oh, no, you can't go on that side of Patterson Park. You know, we, we live a couple blocks away from Patterson Park. You can't go over there. You can't go on that side of Broadway Market. You know, no, you can't do that. You know, um, but uh, to, to live that way when I was growing up and seeing a lot of the, the, the visual stereotyping um, that Senator Scott went through in his life, um, it's, it's kind of, you know, We've seen it, but you don't think it still happens. But obviously, it still does happen. Yeah, and I don't, I don't, I don't agree with it at all. He, he Senator Scott's talked about being pulled over six, seven times, uh, sometimes by the uh, same police officers, uh, and, and being stopped trying to get into the, uh, the Capitol Hill buildings yes, and yes, whatever. Yes, and, yeah. uh, so uh, I, what I didn't see the speech is what Mike Cornby was relaying to me, and how it opened uh, Trey Gowdy's eyes. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, uh, we talked about the positive aspects of conferences like this. Uh, what was there a, a note of discord among the participants? 
Yes. Okay. Uh, the AC unit did not work really well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was, it was, you know, it consistently warm in all of our uh, meeting rooms. I mean, you just see that, you know, when you get in a conference room and it gets a little warm, uh, you always see the head nodding. <laughs> you know, we saw quite a lot of that just from the heat. But um, other than other uh, that's than not, that's not the point of driving that way. But was was it political at all? No, Wayne. Did, no. did, did the Republicans and Democrats in attendance at the same events get along fine? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you didn't have any protesting or anything like that going on. Um, everybody was there for the same, you know, same reason. I mean, you know, we sat down at dinner, and you know, some of the Democrats from the state are sitting with us. Were, you know, was national politics discussed at all, or is it prior, a focus? practically entirely on state and state needs state state yeah. processes yeah. you know state bills state um issues that we yeah. have yeah. yeah was uh the party you belong to identifiable with your name tag or whatever did no. it say wayne clark r mm -mm. no it said wayne clark representative representative yeah. right so you're talking to somebody you have no idea whether they are republican democrat independent or whatever yep did you like that idea Absolutely. Did you get involved yourself in any political exchanges with people, uh, in, in whether they're, you know, creative exchanges or or, or passionate ones or whatever? Uh, not necessarily. I try and stay away from those types of things um, because I'm I'm more wanting to learn rather than um, you know get into a heated argument or uh, uh, about a policy or a procedure. Yeah. But you know, there was many of conversations about you know, how we handled things and how this state handled uh, their issue and um, in regards to, you know, like the uh, first, second, and third grade, the, the learning process. The uh, uh, You mentioned the number of folks from the Eastern Panhandle. Uh, what were the number of folks represented in West Virginia in total? I'm going to say about 60. Okay. It's so hard to put a number on it because you know, it was Tuesday, and I'm like, oh, hey, I haven't seen you all week. Yeah, so. You know, because they were just in different different meetings. Mm -hmm. that, that six should be both senators and the uh, yes. delegates. Was sure. senators, delegates, and uh, staff. And so, staff, okay, yeah. 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 By the way, Mike uh, just texted me and said that Florida has a $119 billion surplus. <laughs> $119 billion surplus. 119. That's, like, insane to and I would go back earlier, having just been in the used car market, uh, <laughs> helping one of my sons. If you can find a ten thousand dollar used car, good luck. Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna look for one hard. Good luck. I, I got a good friend. <laughs> eight eight years ago, you'd have been fine. Or five Nowadays, years ago. I hear you. Yeah. Wayne, thanks for coming in, man. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank thanks, you for Wayne. having me. Thank you. Now, how's the course? We're getting some rain out there, or what, man? No, we're not. We're in the worst area. We don't get rain. Oh, I wish we did. We got some rain on Friday, but yes, we need. It's like every, rained every night in Berkeley County yeah. for the past, you know. But uh, it's not on the no, golf not, course. Not, not on the golf course. Not everywhere. I, I'm not getting very much rain. Really? Getting a little bit, but not. Uh, do you irrigate it all? Yes, we put 350,000 gallons of water on that golf course a week, you, and we're still brown. The 